So chapter five, uh, video number two, I'm gonna continue my discussion on the diet manual. When you peruse through here, you'll see every type of therapeutic diet that could be offered at that particular facility where you're working at. So some of these will look familiar. We've already talked about a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet, a vegan diet. Um, obviously a regular diet would be no um, restrictions at all. So if a patient is admitted on Christmas Eve, for instance, and you're not working, and they're put on a kosher diet or they're on a kosher or requesting a kosher diet, Anyone in that facility then can turn to pages 103 to 107 in their diet manual, and they can then access information about what the client can and cannot have, okay? I'm going to take a look at um, a low-sodium diet, okay? So I'm going to go to then page 45. I'm going to cruise there. And when we're at that um, particular diet, you will see why the diet was prescribed. Okay, so the, the professional working at your facility will see that they're probably on this because they have hypertension or edema, which is the unusual collecting of fluid. Um, and it says which foods are included in this diet, okay? Also gives us some other information here. We'll see that approximate, if someone follows the, the, the specific diet listed here, it'll be about 1,600 to 2,000 calories, 60 to 75 grams of protein, and 2 to 4 grams of sodium, which would be the equivalent of 2,000 to 4,000 milligrams of sodium. Okay? Um, and then you will see... A listing oh I chose the wrong one this one doesn't have a listing of foods included and not included but here for example cholesterol restricted or fat controlled restricted it shows the food group and then foods that are included and foods that are excluded so it's very helpful for someone who doesn't have a nutrition background to be able to have access to this and like I said this is a requirement for any facility that's receiving reimbursement through Medicare or Medicaid, which is almost every facility, to have a, a diet manual on site so that non-nutrition professionals can access it. So with that, I'm gonna to go to the first type of diet that we will be discussing, and that's modified consistency. The term dentition, that's just what your teeth look like. So part of your role as a nutrition professional is to do kind of a physical assessment of somebody. Ask them to open their mouth, look around. Um, obviously now in COVID, you'd be masked up and you'd have a glove if you need to run your fingers around their teeth. Make sure that there's no broken teeth or sharp teeth or um, teeth that are jarring out that are causing um, difficulty with chewing. Um, and then uh, we know from chapter... Um, Two, with carbohydrates, um, that dental caries or cavities are a big concern. And then if we had a patient who was described as edentulous, that would mean that they don't have any teeth. So maybe they're waiting for their uh, dentures to show up. Maybe their dentures didn't make it from the ER to the um, room that they're currently in right now. Um, maybe they lost their dentures or they can't afford them. Um, or they just had surgery to have all their teeth pulled. Um, so without teeth, obviously, you know that that could cause um, issues. Some reasons why someone would have modified consistency, like a smooth or pureed diet, a mechanical soft diet, would be um, a surgery, oral surgery, loose-fitting dentures, missing teeth, inadequate saliva, saliva production, some sort of mouth injury, surgery of the head or neck, and uh, possibly stroke, okay, because uh, stroke is a neurological condition, and that can impact our chewing or swallowing abilities. So then we're going to move to um, what used to be called the National Dysphagia Diet, and you will see you, in your book that it's, it's your book still calls, calls it that, but it's actually been updated to be the 